Hi everyone, John here and um, I thought I'd give you some tips or helpful hints maybe for showing candles and honey uh, honey show as well as some um, reviews on equipment I've got up the honey house. Uh, the reviews will be just my opinion on things that doesn't necessarily make it right it's just what I've noticed over the years of doing beekeeping what I prefer. So we'll start off with um, the honey show we've got one coming up soon and uh, it's the taking of part which is definitely why I do it uh, obviously we try our hardest to have a good product so you could win a cup or something but it's definitely the taking apart for me uh, taking part in doing these things and meeting people at the honey show uh, I love talking to like-minded beekeepers and things like that um, these little pound jars what we can these are some show ones I've got here. Uh, I do them in twos, so that's that two will be for one um, exhibition and two for another. And what I make sure that I do is I don't open these jars up now anymore so that the aroma stays in the glass in the jar. So when the judge opens it up, it's got a good aroma. Open the lid and the judge would normally smell it and it smells really nice and we don't want any hairs in there floating on the top so it's been really well strained through the normal process when you strain your honey through the sievers, sieves but I also strain it through muslin as well so that it's completely nice and clear there's no and, and also there's no scum on the top of the, the uh, honey there's no honey on the inside of the lid the lid hasn't got any dents or scrapes or scratches on it and the jar is perfectly clean also I would weigh the honey to make sure that it's just over a pound so you weigh the glass jar first and then weigh the honey that's going in it so it's just over a pound and also at the bottom of these at the bottom of these jars uh, glass jars what we get there's little marks on there this one's got 20 on it with a line underneath so if you're showing two identical pound jars you want to make sure that the uh, numbers at the bottom match up with each one because some of them says one pound some says two or three or whatever they've all got different numbers on the bottom so you must have them matching up as they wouldn't be matching jars then so that's uh, my little tip there of honey this honey actually came from the Wild Bee Colony Cutout. Um, it's the nicest tasting honey that I've got. So I'd also test this with my refractometer, making sure that the water content is below 18.5. Ideally, you want it in the 17s, really. So it's a bit thicker, and uh, but as long as it's under 18.5. I found that it's okay. We're going to the candles now. Um, I hope that helps a little bit with somebody. Uh, you may have some comments or some tips that would help me with my beekeeping. So if anyone's got more tips than I've just said about the honey, um, please feel free to comment and it would help not only me but other people when you comment um, who watch my channel. We go on to the candles now and uh, I'll get in a little bit closer with the camera so come in and see a bit closer of the candles. Can you see here I've made some simple forms, a uh, block of wood, uh, cut the end off the block of wood and put it on the top, drilled some holes in there the same size as the candles so that you can place the candles in there for the judge. The judge would normally light the centre one and to see whether or not there's any smoke coming from it and it burns nicely, catches the light nicely and it's very important that we get the candles exactly the same as each other. This colour of this candle, these three candles here, is slightly better than these three larger ones. These are more golden and they've got more chance of winning than these in my opinion. So the colour is quite important making sure you've got no holes or dents or imperfections in the candle. Also this wick has been pickled in liquid wax for a few minutes before I put it in the form to make the candle. 
because then this has got a thin layer of wax in it when the judge lights the candle it will light easy and there won't be no black smoke coming up if you just have the wick with no wax on it you get black smoke coming off first of all and then you will probably lose some points over that so out of these two sets of candles I would say this one is the slightly better one purely because of the colour of this wax and we would go on to a nine or an eight ounce block of wax there's two eight ounce, block, eight ounce blocks here and this one has got a better form it's nice and smooth it's, it's got no bubbles in it it's got no splits and underneath there's no splits so this has been cooled off very slowly in the in an oven so that it didn't split but in my opinion this one has got a better color so this is a golden color although this is a nicer smoother finish this one has got a couple of imperfections one small one there uh, this is a golden color this would be a better one for winning a class because of the color that's in my opinion anyway <laughs> it'd be a judge that judges it correctly and not me uh, we go on to these three little skeps a lot of people make these skeps the same again we want this wick to be pickled and also when you turn it over the wick it's got to be in the dead center of the form each candle must be made with the same wax so it's perfectly the same color and on these we've got a little B on this skep and we want to make sure that every B is perfect condition and there's no dents in the wings or anything so they're all perfectly exactly the same and when we come to the five one ounce blocks you put in for a competition there's a one ounce block there um, they want to be perfectly the same no imperfections in them whatsoever once you've got them like that they are very nice and clean and good chance of winning but even so these these blocks here are still not the best color the very best color would be this which is a slightly golden color would be better so you've got to use whatever wax you've got I suppose uh, although you can clean the wax I think if you keep cleaning it it ends up going it an insipid color so there's a few tips on uh, showing candles and wax at the honey show uh, I'm also making a, a honey cake to take along with me uh, I'll be making that on the day or the day before and um, I'm looking forward to going and seeing all my friends and having tea and cakes and seeing all the exhibits so come up now to the honey house and I'll show you a few little reviews right not very good lighting here but hopefully you can all see these uh, here's the contact feeders which I use quite a lot I try my hardest not to feed the bees I try to leave it for themselves uh, so when they've got their honey on I only take off the surplus and leave about the right amount so when they add their own honey after I've extracted my honey from them uh, they end up with 40 or 45 pounds a hive but now and again I do have to feed and if I do I feed with these rapid feeders and, and the reason I use these is because when you take the lid off to fill it up again the bees don't come out you can see by you can see by taking that off that the bees don't come out they've got you know the that bit that keeps the bees in whereas when you use these contact feeders these there's a lot more you can get in them that's great and you turn it upside down and a little bit comes out and the vacuum keeps it in but when you when they add all that feed and you take this off to refill it all the bees come out because it's got nothing to keep the bees in the hive so although I do use these and they're okay I prefer the rapid feeder this is ideal for me I've got entrance feeders I don't really like using these entrance feeders um, this is only my review and it doesn't mean to say that anyone that does it are wrong it's just that I prefer not to use these because it can cause robbing 
when you have these it has happened to me once uh, putting this on that I, I ended up with robins so ma maybe most times it doesn't happen but it did with me once so I don't really use these anymore but this is another good one is um, you can buy this little plastic thing it's got a little bit of mesh there and you can put it onto a glass jar and that ends up as a feeder then so you can on a nuke you can just put that on top of the nuke and that is a great feeder it's a contact one and uh, that's good as well so that's those let's go on to hive tools now of course there's a big array of hive tools there's loads of different ones you can get and these they almost give away when you get equipment sometimes they give them free uh, they do the job just about but they're not they're not ideal in my opinion first of all they're too thick so you can't separate the two boxes very well and they haven't got a JPEG <coughs> I actually prefer myself JPEGs so there's the JPEG so that you can open up a frame easily this just hooks into a frame and you've got a little bit there that goes on the edge of the hive and it pulls the frame up so that is very handy that JPEG tool and it's nice and thin this and uh, so you can get it in between the boxes it's got a nice thin bit all the way around there so you can easily slide that in so that's a great thing when it comes to uh, mouse guards I tend to put these mouse guards on uh, <clears throat> they, they come with a little clip that you screw to the side of the hive and you just slot it in it's quite easy but I don't use the clips I actually got a slightly bigger hole in each side and I use a screw and then another screw in the middle and the reason I do that is because I have had a mouse get in before because it didn't go flat against the hive and the mouse got under there somehow so I have a screw in there one there and one there and to the hive and I've never had a problem with it I quite like them and you can turn them up and use them that way as well so this that's a quite a good mouse guard I think what about queen excluders these are controversial uh, some people use them some people don't you're always going to get thumbs up or thumbs down with these because uh, there's a lot of people that don't like using them but if you're going to use them this is in my opinion the best one and it's got a wooden frame around it and these and then metal runners and the runners are nice and round and smooth and the bees can get in and out quite easily without you know causing too much damage to their wings as they go in and out because that's nice and smooth and round and it's got a bee space here down the edge of this piece of wood there's a bee space on the other side of it there's no bee space so you can put these on the hive this way round so there's no bee space at the top but there is at the bottom so the bees can walk on top of the frames uh, on the box of honey or whatever down below and they can walk through clearly and they can come up and they can walk on top of the frames because it's got a bee space at the bottom but not at the top in my opinion these are the nicer ones there's another wooden one here with the nice things that they can walk through the the grooves look nice and smooth but they've got bee space top and bottom so you can see a bee space there and a bee space on this side so when you put this on top of your super or on top of your brood box you've got double bee space at the bottom or at the top rather you'll end up with double bee space and the bees tend to make a lot of wax uh, bridging comb there so that's not such a good design in my opinion but doesn't stop you using it if you want if you've got them and they're you know they do work they're okay but I prefer the other one then you get the plastic ones with no bee space whatsoever these can be a little bit sharper for the bees as I go through these I don't like these as much at all the reason I don't like them as much is because when you put them on top of a box you put these rest them off the top of the box the bees can't walk over the frames underneath because there's no bee space at all the top bee space is correct because 
you've got a bee space on your box but underneath there's no bee space and the bees cannot walk across the frames so they're only restricted to coming up and down and not walking across the frames so they're not so good in my opinion if you want to get a queen excluder get one of these <laughs> right now we go on to nukes it's some nukes if you're a new beekeeper it's definitely worth having some nucleuses or a second completely empty hive ready for swarm season uh, at some time in the next year perhaps or the year after so not just one hive it's always worth having at least one nucleus box or another spare hive and these are quite good these plastic ones are very cheap about eight pounds on eBay and just fi fix them together yourselves uh, they're quite handy to put five frames in there and I use them quite a bit but they're not any good in direct sunlight because it melts the frames it's happened to me where the sun's been on there and it's melted the edge frame so uh, not so good in the sun these but quite handy much better off with one of these wooden ones like this and oh there's a big spider in that one go away mr spider <laughs> this has got a see-through lid on this but these lids that can see through into a noop is very very handy i find them excellent so when you've got a swarm in there you can have a look at it without uh, lifting that off you can see it through the glass so that's as a spider look this is excellent for um, looking through for the nukes. Also, I like to use these for queen mating nukes as well. So we'll have a couple of uh, three or four frames in there with uh, a queen cell in and things like that for the queen to go out, get mated and come back. Whereas if you use these uh, Appy Dares, these little tiny ones for queen mating, uh, they're okay and people use them a lot and I'm not saying you shouldn't use them but I've used these and um, I find them a little bit messy it, it, it does work and people as I say use them a lot but I prefer really not to use these I only use them when I need to because I've got too many queen cells uh, they do work but messy in my opinion because once once the queen's gone off and got mated and come back you've got the queen to use in the hive but then you've got all these frames in there and bees that you've got to sort out so it's a bit more messy in my opinion my favorite nuke of all is this one the poly nuke I personally think these are so handy I use these a lot this one's got um, a soup on it too it's got the seafood the seafood lid or the seafood crown board and the temperature seems to be quite consistent in these also I use them a lot for catching swarms so you can climb up a tree with this so light you can put it in a branch of a tree and you can also use these for you know for the mating of uh, new queens so such a handy one this is my recommendation for any new beekeeper get one of these and then if your hive does decide to swarm you've got somewhere to put the bees in and this this will go well also you can um, you can get a super to put on top of these like that put your super frames in there and then the hive is a lot bigger for you know for growing that's great a great little thing that is landing boards should we or do we need to use a landing board no we don't but in my opinion again these are better than not having one the reason there's a reason for that and um, i spent hours looking at bees coming into hives all different hives and um I believe that they prefer a landing board and the reason what I believe that is is because if you watch the front of a hive I'll show you quick 
I'll just put that on there for you <laughs> to see. So the bees come down, they land on this board and they walk up and they go in the entrance. If you haven't got a landing board, this is what the bees do. They don't land on that and walk up. I'll show you what they do. The bees congregate around here and as they come flying in to go into the entrance, they land on other bees and grab hold of the other bees with their feet or their little claws and they swing off their other bee and they're holding on to the other bee. So they, they land in on other bees and they're finding it difficult to land on there. Whereas with this, they land on that and just walk in and it's no problem to them. So these are slightly better and that is not in my opinion, that is fact because I've seen it happen, I've watched for hours and these are better. But <laughs> somebody might not agree with me. That's one of them things with beekeeping, we all got different opinions. So, right, next one, here we go. What am I gonna show you now? Next is the Nycock Queen Rearing System. In my opinion, again, this is a very good product for any beekeeper, especially new beekeepers. You haven't got a graph with it. It's quite an easy and simple task. But there is a couple of things that are against it as well as for it and I'm going to say the fours first afterwards I'm going to tell you what I feel is against it but it does work I've used it in a number of occasions so the queen goes in the front and lays eggs in there and at the back these little cups here and the queen ends up laying an egg in a cup so that's how you get an egg from a queen it's locked in there so you know in three days after you've locked it in the larvae is just about to hatch out but this is the problem I found with it is sometimes the bees either cannibalize them eggs in these plastic cups or they move them out and put them somewhere else in the hive they do one of them two things and I have found that on a number of occasions and I have even found that after a few days they're just eggs in there and, they, and they're not larvae. It's because the bees have been cleaning them eggs out. I don't think they like the plastic cups as much as the real thing. That's what I think. But if you're grafting them in these plastic cups, the bees seem to accept it okay. So uh, a, a day old larvae or a few hours old larvae in one of them and it seems to work out very well. But I prefer to make my own rather than graft in those these plastic cups rather than grafting them and I use a Chinese grafting tool perfectly okay very good these are these Chinese ones almost give them away I like to make my own wax ones here so you see I've made, I've made these myself they're pure beeswax and Graft into them and the bees seem to like it a lot better than grafting into a plastic container. They seem to accept these more. Anyway, that's what I've found. So that's that. I really like roller cages for putting, a, especially when you do the NICOT system, you can put a roller cage when you've got your queen cell there you can put the roller cage over and you know that's so helpful look I'll take on it so when you've got your NICOT system and you've got a nice queen cell like that you've got your roller cage before the queen hatches out you can pop that over the over the cell and then when the queen hatches out she's caught in there so she's not flown off or got killed by other queens she's in there perfectly safe and you can pop that in another hive so you can have 30 of them in your hive and they're all going to be safe they are very good these roller cages I think that's a great invention I like these these are head headlamps what you can get put that over your head so you can see when you're grafting a powerful torch uh, very good for grafting I think these little protectors for 
well they're for these look these little protectors you get JGBC to go over your uh, queen cell look it, it only just about gets on that they're just if they could just make them a little bit fatter they'd be okay but they're always too small in fact that's quite a small cell really that and it still won't go on there properly and it's just about you know they need to make them slightly bigger but I'm not saying you can't use them people do use them but I think they're too small all about this then <laughs> an old-fashioned honey extracting machine which I don't use anymore uh, obviously we've got food grade now and all these things and I've got a very large food grade stainless steel machine um, mine hasn't got a motor on it but I prefer one with a motor and also quite like the large plastic ones that you do by hand but there's my old machine uh, which I don't use anymore it's lovely condition and the actual machine part of it works really well it's so smooth and easy to use but I don't use it anymore purely because of uh, health and safety food grade doodads show you inside but it's got a lovely a lovely honey gate there still Oops. inside you can't really see because there's a light but the machine in there is clean as the whistle there's no rust in it whatsoever it's lovely condition inside and out and this work, gear mechanism works lovely it's a, it is a nice machine I do like it but what I would like to do is send it off somewhere and get it treated for um, food grade spray paint or something whatever they can do with it I don't know but I would like to keep it but have it uh, food grade quality so I don't know if anyone was watching this uh, channel my channel whether or not you know anywhere that I could send it or any paint that I could have sprayed on it that's food grade uh, to have it all sprayed inside so that's what I'd like to do if I could. Mm -hmm. 